Hey everyone, AmtrakGuy365 here, and today on this edition of Engines of Amtrak, I'll be discussing the Acela Express High Speed Train Set. High Speed Rail in America is a pretty well debated topic in modern society. At one point, it wasn't always that way. Several decades ago, the US had its fair share and was well known for its fast and streamlined trains, but a collapsing railroad industry in the 1960s and 70s led to the demise of this infrastructure. Meanwhile, in Europe and Asia, railway companies were quickly innovating and developing all new high-speed bullet trains. The first notable example being the Japanese National Railway's Shinkansen Zero Series. The line this train operated on opened in 1964 and reached speeds of 130 miles per hour. Subsequently, there would be the British Rail Class 43 HST in 1976, French National Railway Company TGV in 1981, and German ICE-1 in 1991. Meanwhile, in the United States, high-speed rail developments were being researched and undertaken. The High-Speed Ground Transportation Act of 1965 had kick-started this after the Shinkansen success. This led to the Metroliner trains in January 1969 for operation on the Northeast Corridor, or NEC. This corridor spans between the nation's capital at Washington, D.C., 457 miles north of Boston, Massachusetts. While the Metroliners were built for 150 mile an hour operation, they only ended up reaching 120. This soon dropped to 110 due to the signaling systems and poor track conditions of the time. The Metroliners were also riddled with electrical and technical issues. In short, the Northeast Corridor's infrastructure at this time was rather dated with many bridges, tunnels, and track sections being laid out during the early 1900s and even as far back as the 1870s. After Amtrak's takeover of most passenger rail in the United States in May 1971, this also involved absorbing most of the Northeast Corridor and a plentiful amount of antiquated equipment. In 1976, the Northeast Corridor Improvement Project was enacted to continue electrifying parts of the NEC and eliminate transfers to or from diesel power. This also included new locomotives and upgraded infrastructure. In the 1980s and 90s, the Federal Railroad Administration would further explore high-speed possibilities. 1992 and 93 saw a visit from Europe in the form of the Swedish X2000 and German ICE-1 train sets. These toured the country and conducted several test runs and regular runs on the NEC as potential candidates for long-term high-speed operations. The X2000 achieved a speed of 155 miles per hour, and the ICE topped out at 165 miles per hour. Both trains received very positive and hopeful feedback from passengers and railroad officials alike. Many state officials saw these trains as an opportunity to implement higher speed rail and intermediate corridors to reduce air pollution along with road and air congestion. After these trains were returned to their respective countries, Amtrak soon developed a plan for their new high-speed train set. In 1995, the name American Flyer was proposed for the trains by Canadian company Bombardier. Then, in 1996, Bombardier and Alstom would soon win a deal to build Amtrak's new high-speed train sets. For the Northeast Corridor that same year, 157 miles of the NEC between New Haven, Connecticut and Boston, Massachusetts would be electrified. This would involve 15,000 catenary poles, 140 miles of welded rail, 300,000 concrete ties, 1,550 miles of catenary wire, and 25 new power stations. Amtrak crews also realigned 127 curves, installed new signaling, lowered or rebuilt tracks and bridges to provide clearance for the electrics, and upgraded stations. Three years later, in March 1999, Amtrak officially unveiled its detailed plan for its high-speed endeavor. For starters, American Flyer was changed to a Sala Express combining the words acceleration and excellence. Bombardier and Alstom would build 20 sets with an expected delivery date of late 1999. High-speed maintenance facilities would be built in Sunnyside Yard in Queens, New York, and Southampton Yard in Boston. Now, with regards to technical specifications for the Acela, the power cars would be rated for a top speed of 165 miles per hour, producing 6,169 horsepower each, totaling in at 12,338 horsepower. The power cars weigh in at 204,000 pounds each. The power cars come in at a length of 69 feet, 7 and 3 eighths inches, a width of 10 feet, 5 inches, and a height of 14 feet, 2 inches. The power cars come equipped with a Nathan K5LA hybrid air horn. Here's a few samples.
The power cars are numbered 2000 to 2039. The passenger cars are numbered 3200 to 3559. As for the passenger cars, the end business and first class cars weigh in at 142,000 pounds. The other business cars at 139,000 pounds, and the bistro, or cafe car, weighs in at 137,000 pounds. The passenger cars come in at a length of 87 feet, 5 inches, a width of 10 feet, 4 and a half inches, and a height of 13 feet, 10 and 5 eighths inches. Ultimately, this leads to the entire 8 car train set being 1,246,000 pounds with a length of 663 feet, 8 and 3 quarters inches. A Sella and its passenger cars would be able to tilt around curves. This concept was based upon Bombardier's LRC cars built for Via Rail of Canada in 1980. As 1999 went on into September, Bombardier and Alstom told Amtrak that they needed additional construction time for further testing and modification of the wheel and suspension systems. This statement regarded excessive wheel wear and defective volts. The deadline was pushed back to the spring of 2000 and then moved to fall. Around June 2000, Bombardier completed an experimental high-speed gas turbine locomotive called the Jet Train. It was designed in mind of making European high-speed rail more financially feasible to passenger railroads in North America. Apart from its colors, it looked almost exactly like an Acela power car and took overall inspiration from it. Although multiple tests and proposals for use of the jet train were undertaken, none of them went very far. Back to the Acela, one set had been tested at the Transportation Technology Center in Pueblo, Colorado starting in mid-1999, while a second was tested on the Northeast Corridor. It would finally be on December 11th, 2000, that America's first dedicated high-speed bullet train would go into revenue service. It pulled into Boston South Station to a grand showing of fireworks and a ton of press coverage. It really was a new era for American railroading. As service got underway, the train saw a few visual changes in Amtrak's creative department. The Acela logo was drawn up as an abstraction of a turtle fin symbolizing stately and peaceful service. Amtrak's national logo had also been changed too. Older Acela sets had a red Amtrak wordmark on the nose, while newer ones lacked this in favor of the new travel mark logo. The word Acela also marked a new series of branding. Originally, a three-level service system was envisioned for Acela. First was the Acela Express, the high-speed service. Acela Regional, the renamed for Northeast Direct, Empire Service, and Keystone Corridor trains. And finally, Acela Commuter, frequently stopping rush hour service. This whole system created much confusion amongst passengers, so in 2003, the three levels of service system was dropped. Only the Acela Express name remained. While in service, the Acela Express averaged speeds of 82 miles an hour between Washington DC and New York, and 66 miles an hour between New York and Boston. The 150 mile an hour max speed was only reached for about 33 miles in three sections of track in both Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Over the entire route, average speed is around 70 miles an hour. For the entire trip between Washington DC and Boston, Acela makes the trip in about 7 hours and 7 minutes. A major restriction for the Acela was over century-old bridges and tunnels. Amtrak figured there were 224 bridges beyond their design life. Another limitation was pre-1935 built catenary support systems lacking constant tension features of the newer catenaries east of New Haven, Connecticut. Despite this, reception and ridership on the Acela Express was very positive with passengers enjoying the downtown and suburban connection points the train offered. However, after only a year and a half in service in August 2002, Acela train sets were suddenly removed from service. It was revealed that the brackets connecting the trucks with the yaw dampers that prevented swaying were cracking. In the shops, the Acelas were given redesigned trucks and frequent inspections. Another incident took place during a hot August day in 2003. After a widespread northeast blackout occurred as a result of a software bug at a power plant, an Acela train was stranded on Hellgate Bridge for over 9 hours until a rescue engine from Sunnyside Yard arrived to tow the engine back to New York's Penn Station. Afterwards, things went well until April 2005 when cracks in the passenger car brake discs were discovered. Ironically, the Metroliner services the Acela intended to replace took over for the out-of-service train sets. On September 21st, all train sets resumed operation and for quite some time thereafter, the sets continued normal operation, racing passengers and business folk alike up and down the Northeast Corridor. As the year 2016 wore on, 
Amtrak began to seek out a new high-speed train set to replace the Acela as they were nearing 20 years old, closing in on their reliable service life. These new sets would come from Alstom and replace all 20 existing Acela sets. On August 26th, then-Vice President Joe Biden announced a $2.45 billion federal loan package to pay for Amtrak's new high-speed train sets. The 28 new sets would allow for improved frequency and increased capacity on the Acela Express service. Each set would have 386 seats, which was 25% more than the current Acela. It was then on January 20th, 2017, that the Acela received presidential recognition. Outgoing Vice President Joe Biden, nicknamed Amtrak Joe, rode the train one last time out of Washington, D.C., back home to Wilmington, Delaware. Back on Amtrak! <laughs> Biden, an avid Amtrak supporter, had traveled over 8,000 round trips on Amtrak starting in 1973 as a senator, accumulating over 2 million miles of Amtrak travel. A year later, unfortunately, a major incident with the Acela became the highlight of some news sources. On February 6, 2018, Acela Express train number 2150 split apart between the first and second cars in the set at 124 miles an hour near Havre de Grace, Maryland. Luckily, no one was injured, but this was not a good look for the train's safety record. One year later though, in 2019, a minor rebranding occurred with the train. On September 23rd, the Acela Non-Stop was introduced, a direct run between Washington DC and New York City. Additionally, the Express in Acela Express was dropped from all trains. From there, Acela continued a stable career until the year of 2020. I think you all know where this is going. Due to a specific global event, all Acela trains were suspended to maintain social distancing measures. Service would resume June 1st. Even if service did resume, the original Acela set's days would be numbered. Amtrak's new 11-car high-speed train set, named the Avalia Liberty, began to be delivered to their railroad in February 2020. Although built for speeds of 186 to 220 miles per hour, one set was tested in Pueblo, Colorado up to 165 miles per hour. A second prototype set was delivered in March for testing along service tracks in the Northeast beginning in May. The first test over the entire corridor occurred on September 28th. These new sets feature a 30% weight reduction, an active tilt system allowing for faster speeds around curves, and along with coinciding signal and track upgrades will allow for regular 160 mile per hour operations. If proposed infrastructure upgrades are completed, the new sets would be able to reach speeds of 186 miles per hour. The Avalia Liberty is set to enter revenue service between 2021 and 2022. Test runs of the trains are still being conducted as of the making of this video, so if you plan to catch one of these runs, perhaps this video's sponsor, Skillshare, can help. Skillshare is a great online learning service and community for people who love to be creative, like me. Whether you are a beginner or a professional looking to refine your skills, Skillshare has thousands of classes to meet your schedule and current skill level. For example, Perhaps you're interested in photography or videography for rail fanning. Skillshare has you covered. Or perhaps you're interested in graphic design or illustration to make graphics like you see in my videos, so you don't have to use crusty 144p images from 2003 in your videos. Well, Skillshare has plenty of classes for that too. Myself, I struggle a bit with low light and night photography. Considering I live in an area where trees along the railroad cast large shadows and Amtrak always runs at 70 miles per hour in low light, it can be tough getting good pictures sometimes. So, I took a look at street photography, capture the life of your city by trash hand. And seriously, I'm being completely honest in saying this, it was incredibly helpful and interesting to watch. As someone who has at least 5 years of experience taking train pictures, it was actually pretty perfect for my skill level. Heck, there was even an example of shooting a subway train moving and both you and I, I'm sure, take pictures of moving trains too. There was also plenty of low light, night photography examples and tips too which I needed help with most. So in that sense, it was pretty helpful. Another benefit in using Skillshare, there's no advertisements, and they're always posting new premium classes. Best of all, it's only $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks a ton to Skillshare again for sponsoring this video. Now back to engines of Amtrak! Concluding upon the Acela, the 20-year-old Acela Express train sets continue doing what they do best, speeding passengers up and down the Northeast Corridor as not only the fastest train in the United States, but all of North America. They serve as a crucial transportation link in the most densely populated part of the United States, serving the country's busiest rail passenger stations. They've definitely made their mark, and as of now, continue to make their mark on the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation.
Thanks for watching this remade episode of Engines of Amtrak. Special thanks to all of those who submitted their pictures and videos for this episode as well. Now don't worry, this won't be the last episode of Engines of Amtrak like last time. There's still a few locomotives I have yet to cover, and episodes I want to remake too. I plan to revisit most, if not all, of the older episodes and remake them to a standard I find suitable now. So then after those, or somewhere in between, I'll also finally get around to Engines of New York Central, if you still remember that. I hope you'll look forward to those along with next time where I'll discuss the Siemens ACS-64. Anyway, stay tuned and thank you again for watching.